Hello everyone, hopefully you're doing pretty well today. My name is Deborah. and welcome to my channel, Crafty Talking Creations. Today I'm going to be doing an ink project using Chocotour's Pennant Banner. This is a uh, banner. This is a 9 by 12 banner. It comes, it's a canvas banner that is stitched. It does not have any washing instructions in here, so I'm going to assume, I did not pre-wash this at all, so I'm going to assume once you do your project, just hand wash it and uh, just let it air dry. You will definitely need to iron it. And it comes with the pre-drilled wood dowel and also some twine. And I am going to be a couple squeegees here and I'm going to be using my detail tool. But I'm going to be using this transfer. This is Opportunity for Joy. This is one of Chocotour's Watts of Love transfers. And with every purchase of this transfer, $2 gets donated to Watts of Love. I will have uh, a link posted down in the description box. For one, it will be an edible shopping cart link. And two, I will have a link going to uh, Watts of Love and about that organization that Chocotour helps support. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Now, some additional things you're going to need, obviously, is going to be ink. I'm going to be using Cadet Blue today. Bumblebee Yellow, and I will be using the Ocean Mist. Now I know these two colors come in paste pack or come in uh, ink packets. Now they have ink packets, like they do the paste packets. So that's awesome. So if you just want to get the packets for just the one project, you can do that. Um, I don't believe they have the Ocean Mist. This is just an option. You don't have to do it. You could do this all yellow. I just thought this looked like a little bit of a cloud, so I'm going to use the Ocean Mist there. But you don't have to. You could do it all yellow. It's an Like I said, it's an editable shopping cart link, so you can do whatever colors that you would like to do. Additional things that you are going to need, all right? You will need an iron. You will need a surface to iron on if you do not have a tabletop ironing board or anything like that. I just have a towel here and a Teflon um, mat and that is to protect my surface. You will also need some parchment paper to put over your, uh, your design after you've inked it because you need to heat set this. And you will need a dryer or you can just let it dry for a uh, for like 24 to 48 hours if you'd like to do that. And you will also need an ink mat. Well, let me put it this way. You don't need it, but it definitely helps. Okay, this is their ink mat. This is the 11 by, I think it's 23 inches. You can cut these down. They also have another size. I think it is 17 by 17 or 18 by 18. Don't exactly quote me on that, but it's a square one. All right, your ink mat comes in a backer sheet, just like, uh, not a backer sheet, a uh, plastic sleeve, just like your transfers do. And it has this film, okay? You need to make sure that you keep this, that way you can put it over, because this is sticky. This is what you put your, any of your fabric on. It holds it into place, so you don't have to worry about it sliding on you or anything like that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down on my ink mat and I'm just going to smooth it over. And I'm just going to smooth it on there and that way it just holds it on. Now how you clean this ink mat is just with a sponge and some water. That is it. Do not use disinfectant wipes. Do not use baby wipes. It will remove the stickiness. And that's pretty much it. That's on there pretty smooth. Now, with my transfer, um, let's see here. I need to mark the back of this. Just going to do an arrow. Now, because I'm putting this on fabric, I do not need to fuzz this. So I just peel off my backing sheet. There's the shiny side. That's the matte side. And then I'm just going to push, push that. <laughs> position this on here. Now I'm not going to put it way up here at the top because when I put that down in there it's going to take up a little bit of space. So I would like to have this down a little bit lower. You can measure if you would like to. If you want to be precise. I have a tendency to just kind of eyeball things. But it's totally up to you. I am making this for my husband. We're going to hang it in the bedroom. Um, so that way, it's just an encouragement for 
You know, every day we wake up, there's a chance and an opportunity to have some joy in the day. You know, we have our blue days, and this and that, for those of you that do not know, my husband was diagnosed with um, terminal cancer. And uh, we have our blue days. And I thought this would be a nice, when I saw this transfer, I thought of him, and that we have days we just, we need a little reminder. Every day is an opportunity for joy. So I thought this would be a perfect, perfect project to make for encouragement. So... I've got, uh, like I said, this is the Cadet Blue. I've got a little tray here. And, oh, I've got me some optional wood beads. I'm not sure if I'm going to put that on or not, but that's totally optional if you want to. On my uh, my jute cord that they give me for, for my banner to hang it up. All right, I am using the ink. Now, the ink does not dry as fast as the paste. You will need a little drying tool. If you want to speed it along, or like I said, you could just leave it to dry. Um, I'm going to be using the mini squeegee. I've got this one here, and it's the same process as, as when you apply your paste. Same thing with the ink. Just put your, your squeegee in there, bevel side, and then you just generously apply it to your transfer. Now, some of the inks, as well as like the paste, I've said it before, can stain your transfers. Don't worry about that. It's not going to look brand new sometimes with some of these inks or paste. You just want to make sure that you do not get any ink or paste dried in that silk screen. All right, I'm going to do the lettering here in the blue. I've got a little bit more play time. Like I said, this does not dry as quickly. So I'm going to go down here. This is a beautiful um, shade of blue. It's like a an ultramarine type blue. Now if you wanted to make more like a navy blue, you could add like a little bit of black or brown to it. Not much black, I'll tell you that right now. It does not take that much to make this a little bit darker. This is a gorgeous shade of blue. Nice, crisp blue. Now you can use whatever colors you would like to use. If you wanted to do this in black or pink or coral or um, well, I'm not sure they have the pink. I think they have Marvelous in pink, in the, in the ink. They don't have as many colors in the uh, ink as they do the paste. I wish they did, but they don't. So if there's a color they don't have, you would need to mix, mix your colors and come up with colors that you want. That is another one of the reasons why I like Chalk Couture, is you can customize your art, your projects, to the colors that you would like to use. I'm just trying to give you some inspiration, um, some ideas of some things that you could do with some of the transfers. And I, I like these canvas pennant banners. Now, if you have your own fabric and you want to make your own banners, you could do that. I do have some fabric that I will eventually do that. Um, I got some like denim at a really good deal, and I could use those to make pennant banners and stuff with if I wanted to. So if you have some fabric, you could do that also. All right, I'm just going to go through and scrape off this excess and put this back in the jar. Anything that has not absorbed into the fabric. We have good even coverage. Make sure I got my R there. Going back over this, I see a few little areas around the edges I kind of want a little light on. So I just need to make sure I have those covered well. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. And now I'm going to go into the Bumblebee Yellow for my son. 
Now, if you wanted to make it like a sunset and you use, use the orange, you could do that. Now, I want to be careful because I want to do those little areas there. I To me, look like little clouds. You can do that in the... Um, in the yellow if you want it to. Totally up to you. I thought this would be nice and cheery. Good. Now I'm just going to go through and scrape off the excess. Now some portions of this video, like when I go to dry it, I probably, I will either fast forward or I'll just pause the video until I get done with it and then I'll come back and show you, you know, like how to iron it and heat set it, that kind of thing. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Put my cap back on that. And now this is the detail tool. I'm going to be using this little end right here. It's like a little teeny tiny squeegee there. And then the other end has a little cap and it's got like a little point on it, but I don't need that. I just need this little bit. And this is the Ocean Mist. And to me that just looked like a little cloud kind of floating through there. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you do, uh, if you could, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It helps me with YouTube algorithm. You know, it lets them know, hey, you know, I, you, I you like this video. People like this. And that way they can show it to other people. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you'd like to see any other videos that I make, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. It's free. And I would greatly appreciate that. And it will also help me with the YouTube algorithm. But be sure to click that notification bell so that way whenever I do post a video, YouTube will notify you. And if you would like to, you can get on my email list. I'll have a link to that posted down below in the description box. So if you'd like to sign up and join my email list, I would greatly appreciate it. That way I can let you know about any specials that are going on or any deals or anything that I may be offering or uh, videos, things like that. All right, now it is time for the peel and reveal. I'm going to slowly lift this up. Now see my E didn't quite go through, so I'm going to lay that back down. Oops, wrong color. What happened to my blue? Oh, here it is. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm just going to tap that down a little bit and just go over it again. There we go. I'm going to slowly lift up. That way if there's any areas that you may have missed or they're not completely covered as much as you like. Oh, I like how this looks. You can just lay it down and touch it up. Okay. Just want to make sure. Oh, I love that. I hope he likes this. I think he will. I'm going to slip that aside. I get it to sink to clean it. Just put it down with some water. As soon as you're done with your project, you should um, take it to the sink and wash it with some cold water and one of their board erasers or uh, a magic eraser. All right, I've got my caps on my ink, so I'm going to peel this up off. my ink mat. Now it did not go through on the back, so I don't need to wipe this off. So I'm going to set this aside, my ink mat, and I'll put that, uh, that sheet on later. So what I'm going to do is I've got a little drying tool here. I've got my iron, iron heating up right now. I've got a little drying tool so that way I can speed the process along because you need to make sure that this is dry before you heat set it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video 
and then once it's dry, I will show you how you heat set it, okay? So I'll be with you in a bit. Okay, now that this is dry, it only took me, I would say, a few minutes. Um, I did go ahead and put my film back on my ink mat, and I did want to show you after the transfer is washed, you know, the cadet blue did stain some of the transfer. Don't worry about it. Your transfer is still fine. You just want to make sure that you don't have any dried ink in your silk screen. Okay? Just wanted to show you, and it will be perfectly fine. Now, how you heat set this. Now, how you heat set this, that way you can wash it. Like I said, they did not come with washing instructions, so I'm going to assume these are not pre-washed, and I didn't want it to shrink up. So I'm just going to uh, assume to hand wash it and lay it flat to dry. I would not throw it in a dryer. Canvas is 100% cotton. Cotton shrinks up a lot. All right, um, if you don't have like a little tabletop ironing board or anything like that, this is my setup that I do. I have a towel. I have one of these Teflon like baking sheets. Okay, um, tough line like mat baking sheets. I got these off of Amazon, like a pack of three. Um, I, I tell that I put my fabric on top, and then you get a piece of parchment paper. Not wax paper, parchment paper. You lay it over the top of your, your fabric. And then you, have, you get your iron. No steam. And then what you do is you just you start ironing and it takes I would say about four minutes you know you want to stop just a few seconds on each section a little bit and then you just want to keep moving your iron over for about four minutes and then once you've done that then you flip it over and then you do the back side the same way so a total of about anywhere from six to eight minutes is what you want to do to make sure that it's good and heat set. If you're using an iron, remember no steam. So I'm going to pause this video, I'm going to iron the front, and then I will show you how I flip it over, and then I will start on the back. Alright, so I'll see you in a few minutes. It's almost four minutes. Just got probably like a half a minute or so left to do. Okay, it's been four minutes for this side. Set my iron aside. Remove my parchment paper. Oh, that's hot. And all I'm going to do is flip it over on the back side. Now, if you have a thinner fabric, I've done some ink projects and the ink has come through on the back. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, I'm just letting you know. Not all your projects will look like that. Some of your ink sometimes does seep all the way through. So all I need to do is lay my parchment paper back on and then proceed with the same process. Just slowly go over each area like this. Oops, get that out of the way for another four minutes. So I'm going to pause this video and I will be back when I've done that. See in a few. Okay, it has been four minutes, so I just need to remove my parchment paper. And there we go. The project is heat set. I do, I like the way the ink feels. It's not like overly stiff or anything like that. It forms with the fabric very well. I like their ink a lot. All right, now to put the banner together. All right, I'm going to move this. I'm going to keep my towel here because I'm going to, I think I'm going to add the beads and I don't need them rolling everywhere. So all you need to do is just take your dial rod. It already is pre-drilled with the holes. Now, if you want to paint it another color, you could, but it comes like this with this color. That's totally up to you. I'm going to leave it the way it is. And you just pop it through. The only thing is with the seam there at the end, you might have to fiddle with it a little bit because that dial will catch on that seam. And then you want to make sure that your holes are facing up and down, like that. Okay. 
Now it comes with the jute twine. And I did notice that this like is a little, it just fits in the hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a piece of tape. Here, let me see if I can zoom in this. Take a piece of tape and just kind of wrap it around it. Kind of make one of those, um, what do they call those things that end of shoelaces? Is it like an eyelid or something? I forget. I don't know what that's called. But anyhow, just tape the ends, both ends. And get a pair of scissors. scissors and just like snip at an angle that way it will be easier hopefully to put through yes all right now I'm gonna put not gonna put this end uh, through yet because I need to put the beads on now, they've given me a pretty generous amount of cording here. I don't need mine that much. So that way, you know, you can tie it. Now, you could tie a knot through here, but I would not trust it. I think it might pull through. So what I'm going to do is wrap this around, go over on the other side, wrap it. So that way it looks something like that. And then I'm just going to tie it. Actually, now I'm going to come back up through around again. All right, let me show you that. What I'm, well, this, you can tie it however you want, but I think this will probably be the most secure way, at least that I can think of. See, it goes through this. I'm going to wrap it to the left. I'm going to come back over and around. I'm going to wrap it to the right side of my other end there. Okay? I'm going to come back up through the middle, off to the right and I'm going to tie a knot right. now you can add a little glue in there if you want to make sure that it holds you can do that I'm just going to leave it kind of like that and then we are good to go. All right, now I'm going to string on my beads. I'm not sure if I want to go with three or five on either side. I think things look better in odd numbers. So I'm just, I want to just kind of see how that looks, and I think I will do five. Four, five. So I need to put on ten beads, five for either side. You can do the whole thing if you wanted to. That's totally up to you. These are unfinished wood beads. I think uh, these are 15 millimeters. Okay. And they have like a six milli uh, four, four or six, four or six millimeter hole. I got the large hole ones. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to just put this end through here. Where and enough to where I think because I don't want it hanging too too long, so you just kind of mimic how you're going to hang it. I think that looks pretty good about right there. So I'm going to go wrap it to the right, go to the left. This is just me, you can do it however you want. Oh, for Pete's sakes! Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to come up the middle, off to the right, and I'm just going to tie it. Now, oh, a little backwards here for me. Yeah, having those ends taped down and cutting it to a point definitely helps. Oops. All right. I think I didn't know how to tie. 
It's because I'm on camera. <laughs> I know how that goes. Oh. All right. Make sure that's snug. Why is it giving me issues? Okay. There we go. Alright, just make sure that's good and tight. And then I'm going to slide my five beads over two, three, four, five. I'm going to snip my ends here. Oh, let me zoom out here. And there we go. You've got yourself a wall hanging. I do. I like how this looks. I hope this should give you an idea of a project that you can do with the ink and their banners. Um, they're really nice. I like the quality of them. I like how the ink uh, goes on these. I like how it feels. Um, I do. I hope this gave you some inspiration that you were able to use this transfer and hopefully this saying gives you some encouragement, words of encouragement for those days. That you, you know, you're just kind of blueing down. You're just like, yeah, you know what? Every day is an opportunity for joy. You just have to change your mindset. Um, I do. I hope you enjoyed this project and uh, thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful day.